Hey guys, welcome to Travel with Austin. I'm Austin. Today I'm going to be going over my attempt at ghost hunting at Post Town Elementary School. Now, before I get into this actual video, um, if you haven't checked out my tour of this place yet or my tour of the sleeping quarters, definitely go ahead and check those out. Now I'm also going to format this a bit differently. Um, and you can see the timestamps in the description below. But we're actually going to start out with the legends of Post Town. So there are really two main legends to go over. Now the first one is actually just historical fact. Before the school was in its place, um, in the late 1800s and in the early 1900s, there were actually two train wrecks in the area. Um, in total, about 40 people died between those two train wrecks. And while the train tracks were not at the current place of the school, it is reported that the land that would become the school was used as a triage area, meaning that quite a few people ended up dying on that land as they tried to care for them. Now the second legend is considered more of a legend. Basically the legend goes that at some point during the school's history, a girl named Sarah was on the top of one of the stairs here and was being bullied. Her bullies pushed her down and she fell down the stairs um, she was greatly injured. However, she did not die in the school. It is reported that she later either died at home or in the hospital. Now, there is technically no record to back this legend up. However, um, people who have gone to the school and went there when it was open have reported that they remember this event happening. So those are the two main legends. So I'll keep this section rather brief. Post Town is known for some of its shadowy figures, but I did not see any shadowy figures the whole time I was there. I know that's pretty disappointing, but moving on. So now we're going to be talking about strange noises in the building. Now this first noise I'm about to play actually happened before I officially began my investigation. Um, I just left a phone recording in a room to see if I could get anything, and later when I listened back, I captured this. Now to me, this very clearly is something slamming somewhere. Now at this time, I was back in the sleeping quarters area, getting ready for my actual investigation. Um, part of me does wonder if maybe this is locker slamming somewhere else in the building, but I'm not sure. Now the next piece actually started when I officially began my investigation, and I'm going to play it a few times um, with the volume normal then the volume turned up because while I could very clearly hear it in person um, it did not show up well on my audio but here we go hi guys welcome to travel with Austin I'm Austin what Austin Austin so if you're still having trouble hearing it that is completely fine like I said it didn't show up well on my microphone but basically, while I was introducing the video, I heard a loud bang coming from the principal's hallway behind me, which is the extremely narrow hallway for my videos. Um, nothing was there when I went and checked it out, so I have no idea what it was. Now, the next one I got when I left my phone at the bottom of Sarah's steps, um, and I'm just going to play it again. Now, I am not really sure what that is, but it definitely gives me the creeps. Now, other than that, really all I had were audio glitches for the rest of the night. Things like this. Which is probably nothing, but I thought I should still report about it. Which brings me into the next topic. Issues with electronic devices. So something some paranormal investigators consider to be a sign of the paranormal is electronical issues such as battery drain. Now, I'm not 100% sure how much I believe in that, but I do feel the need to report it because it is one of the most prominent things that happened to me that night. So for starters, most of my devices have their batteries draining crazy fast, 
and I had to recharge some of them multiple times. Um, I recharged my phone a few times. I had to recharge my spotlight three times. And very interestingly enough, actually, um, I have a 20,000 milliamp um, power pack, and it was at 100% when I came in. I did use it to charge one thing, um, but it basically went from 100 to zero while I was out of the room, even though at that point there was nothing on the charger, which is extremely weird. Now, the camera that I put down where Sarah apparently fell down the stairs, um, I put that down there, I left it recording. For some reason, after about 13 minutes and a few seconds, it shut itself off. Now, the device didn't shut off, just the recording. And I have no idea why that happened or what would cause that to happen, but the device was still on, still had plenty of battery left when I came and checked on it. Just after 13 minutes and so many seconds, it had shut off the recording. Now, finally, when I left to go get food, um, when I went to plug in my phone to my car, Android Auto acted like it had never been connected before and was trying to get me to set it up like it was brand new to my car. Um, but once I got to Wendy's, it was completely fine. I unplugged it and replugged it and it worked fine again. Now, of course, there can be some logical explanation for some of these. Um, batteries drain quicker in the cold. However, I would say that doesn't explain the power pack, which was in the heated sleeping quarters the whole time. I can't think of a possible reason for the camera that just stopped itself recording. Um, and for my car, Android Auto is kind of a buggy mess. So even though that is weird and that is the first time it's happened to me, that doesn't necessarily mean it was something paranormal. Now, the big proof of the night... Um, as you guys know, I like to save that for last, if you saw the last time I went ghost hunting. And we're going to call that the light incident. Okay, so let me tell you about the light incident. So basically, when I went to go and get food, I got a text from the owner asking me if everything was okay, and asking if I could call him. So I called him, and he basically just wanted to check up, make sure everything was okay, and asked me why I had the lights on everywhere. Now, I told him I wanted them on for my walkthrough and to do some photography. And he said, okay, just please turn them off in the areas you're not going to use. I said, okay, I'll do that as soon as I get back. So I went, I got my food, and before I even ate it, I went upstairs and turned off most of the lights. Now, I distinctly remember turning off the lights in this particular hallway. Because I remember that, first of all, I thought I probably won't go up here for a bit. And I remember that the switch was in the middle of the hallway, which I thought was incredibly weird. So I go up there, I turn it off, I go downstairs, I eat, um, I watch an episode of TV on my iPad. So I was probably gone for around 40 minutes at least. And then when I come back up, the light is back on. Now at the same time, my spotlight starts dying. So I go downstairs and I go to charge it, but I decide that I want to make a TikTok about this light. And basically I grab my phone, I go up there to make the TikTok, and then this happens. Hey guys, so tonight I'm spending the night at um, an abandoned haunted elementary school. And basically a little while ago, I went to go get food, and the owner called me and he asked me why I had the lights on everywhere, and if I could turn them off in the areas I wasn't using. So I said yeah. And once I got my food, I came back and I turned off most of them. And when I came back up here again to start investigating, when I turned the corner around here, this light is on. I distinctly remember turning this light off because I thought to myself, well, I probably won't come up here again for a while. And now it's back on. I know you have like no reason to believe me, but it's back on. Oh, fuck. So basically, I heard that thump at the end of the video. I went to go investigate and see if I could figure out what it was. 
Um, I could not figure out what it was, where it was coming from, other than that general direction at the end of the video. I have no clue really anything about it. Now, I did have a phone recording in a room near the general direction that it came from. However, to make matters more confusing, that phone actually did not pick up any recording sound of that thump. It was only heard by me in person and on the TikTok. It was not heard um, by the phone that was in a room that should have been closer towards where I heard the thump come from. So that just makes everything a little bit more confusing. Now that is really all of the evidence I collected while I was here. And that's really going to wrap up today's video, honestly. So if you guys did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. I make new videos every week. Also, let me know what you think about any of this evidence or if you've been to Post Town and you have any experiences there you would like to share. So once again, thank you guys for watching. And I still have at least one more video coming of this place, so definitely stay tuned for that.